No? She no, named herself. I was, in, I'm, I'm not ashamed to say I wanted to get a snake up here, and, and Miss B was like, this well, what snake. about if we brought, no. <laughs> what about if we brought Thumbelina She's Thumbelina sleeping in? because it's night time. <laughs> what do you think it is? You know what it is. It's just, I'm excited because it, although, and this kind of drives home the point, it's like, yeah, we see chickens a lot. This is a very special little, I don't know if she's even a chicken. She's a hen, yeah? No, well, she's a chicken. I recently. Should I? You all right? She's, she's special because she's the world's smallest chicken. I love her so much. Her she name named is... herself at Thumbelina, you know. She's a bantam hen. Everybody here can hold her if they want to. Do we pass around the chicken? Is that against food code? Is anybody interested in taking this chicken? <laughs> you can no feel her breathing. Oh, so that's, that's so scary. You can smell her, and she'll probably start to here, smell like other people, but that's also interesting. I, I go to, do you want to say anything? She's so chill. When she got here, she was sleeping. What if I? What happens if I let go of her? I don't know. We can see. She kind of flies. The day she arrived, she did a lot of flying, and it really excited all the other animals. Okay. Enjoy to throw up in the air. No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> I mean, you could. Nothing would happen, really. She's okay. Oh, she's the best guest I've ever had. <laughs> here, maybe she might shit, but you know, she yeah. probably wouldn't be the first thing to shit in this in this place. Um, I not. I mean, they don't go constantly. I just wanted to get this live animal nervous. vibing show. She's the coolest. I had no idea she was so cool. Um, She's my favorite of our chickens. So another reason why I thought it would be cool to bring her on here is because, um, and maybe most of you don't know this, there's actually a livestock ban that's going to happen. They're trying to push through in Chicago right now. Um, because and I know. You're hired, little guy. Um, so Chicago, they spun it in the reader, and they, they spun it in the paper. They were like, uh, tired of that rooster crowing in your neighbor's yard? Well, there's a livestock fan coming through soon. You won't have to deal with that anymore. But for people like you and for so many other different kinds of people in Chicago, I think that's going to change things. Because it's not not a lot of people are like keeping goats in their yard, but there are there are chickens, there's roosters. They do a service to us as a community. Can you talk about what's going on with that? Hmm. Um, it's this blowhard alderman. His name is Alderman Lopez. He also proposed that we make animal care and control no kill but with no plan for how that would happen so for an understaffed under-resourced institution that has to accept every animal he didn't really acknowledge what that would mean right and like even if they were resourced and staffed that would mean animals living in cages into perpetuity which seems like a worse type of torture than euthanizing but it felt very principle based right like no one likes euthanizing kittens that's not the goal, but to make it a no-kill shelter. But let's be realistic. Who's going to take care of those kittens? I mean, it's outrageous. Alive. It's outrageous. And it's already pretty packed in there, so. So for someone that just wants to sort of be like, I'm an animal welfare advocate, and that didn't go over because that was absurd. Um, well, he so also doesn't listen to anyone that works in animal welfare and is not networking with anybody else that like actually has ties to that thing. So recently his thing is a livestock ban because he found a hundred, there were found in his ward, a hundred chickens for a cockfighting ring. But already cockfighting's illegal, so it's like his proposed livestock ordinance wouldn't address that. There's already things in place to address that because that's already illegal. The livestock so, ban is not gonna fix that. And people will no. keep doing it. And it's very punitive. The fines on it are $500 per day per animal. So for us, that would mean well, are we even counting the chickens? Does it count chickens? I think that's what it's all about, is the chickens. It'd be like five grand a day. Let's just For you to have livestock here in Chicago. If we were violating the ordinance. So it doesn't give you much time to fix that problem, right? Because if it goes through and then you haven't fixed it, your problem is five grand. Well, for us, but we might have more livestock than anybody around us. We have the whole thing. But I'm going to send her on over to your, to your way. I mean, she's happy with me. She likes me. Yeah, she you should stay with me. Yeah, yeah. We could put her on your shoulder. <laughs> okay, here we go. She's going on my shoulder. I watched um, a huge compilation of Johnny Carson animal tricks <laughs> in preparation for this. And I think that his general response is to make Jerry 
what's his name? Um, Jerry Lewis like face is like little oh, animals. And I'm not gonna. Do you could put her on your head like one of those um, centaur women in Fantasia. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't want to hurt her. Well, that's lovely. <laughs> well, I could go out like this. I'm fine with doo doo. I'm not afraid of doo doo. How's she doing up there? We'll see how long we can keep it up. Uh, uh, okay, so there's a couple more things that you do. Can you take me seriously? Wait, can we talk about Thumbelina for a second? Oh, yeah, can you talk about where she about sleeps? Her? Yeah. She sleeps not with the other chickens in their coop, but with two plastic swans. You know those planter swans? She yeah. sleeps under their butt. And then people have been seeing her, and they say, oh, well, you know, birds are very visual. And I'm like, okay, you know. And they say, oh, to protect the berry orchards or whatever berry plants, berry farms are called, they put kites that look like hawks to keep all the other birds away, to keep the other birds from coming and eating the berries. What you're saying is the birds are really stupid, right? Is I don't that what know. You're I don't understand them. Oh, They're God. strange. There's no poop. No, there's nary a poop. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I just turn do you want do you want to take her? She wants to stay, it appears. We'll just stay then, it's fine. I like it because it's like I'm being fanned. Yeah. I think that what you're talking about too, you're like, well let's talk about where she how she sleeps. I think that that's really interesting is animals have Animals have really cool habits that kind of remind us that it's okay for us to have our weird habits. Like well, just, it's specific so many to the different ones. They do different things. So then She's someone beautiful. else said, oh, the birds are very visual. And I was like, go on. And she said, oh, I'm a bird keeper at the Brookfield Zoo. I raised whooping cranes. And if you raise whooping cranes as a human, this is what she told me. I don't know if this is true. And you talk to them. They then think that they're a human and they won't mate with the other whooping cranes. And so then they just want to live their life with the humans and mate with the humans. So you have to dress up as a whooping crane and not speak. And then they can re-release them in Louisiana and the whooping cranes believe that they're whooping cranes. Can we show that photo? This was the only photo I sent. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? Very visual though. Is that That's the a, whooping cream costume? That's, That's the ridiculous. Costume. That, oh, God, you you would be like, which one is unlike the other one? <laughs> Somehow that does it. So then I thought, yeah. how could she possibly think those swans are birds? Because she's never seen a swan before. They don't move, they don't breathe, they don't do anything. But now I think, based on seeing this image, that she believes that they're birds and that they're her family and that's why she sleeps with those plastic swan planters. I believe that too. I think animals are, yeah, inspiring. Um, wow, I want to end on that cute side. That was really nice. I just that's want to her ask origin you. story. But yeah, she's beautiful. Um, can you talk, you, so you also do work for the Humane Society. I um, do. And I think many times you'll tell me tales of your travels on the transports and I have to be like, I have to be like, no, 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 no stop, stop, stop. I can't listen to this. And it doesn't mean that I'm inviting you to tell a horror story. You can if you want. Maybe a good story, but what do you tell us what it means that you do transports? I won't tell a horror story. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, They're out there. I transport animals for the Humane Society. The Humane Society doesn't sponsor the program anymore. They lost funding. Now it's funded by Friends of Animal Friends of Animal Care and Control. So it's a program based in Garfield Park, North Lawndale, Little Village. Mm-hmm. For people that have animals that want to get them spayed or neutered, I pick them up, I drop them off. This is my thing is I always bring them home. And so I take them, they get all their shots, they get checked out by a vet, they're spayed and neutered. So the idea is that it gives people the resources to maintain the animals that they have because it's easier to take care of one animal than an animal that's like perennially having offspring. That yeah. becomes impossible. Um, they're going to make more animals. I put my mic down here to try and get Thumbelina to cluck into it. But so, so it, literally, I take them around in a scary minivan that I also transport goats in. I also put the pony in. My dogs get sprayed by raccoons. I also put them in that van. So it's the it it's smells. intense, immersive experience. <laughs> if anybody's like, I can't feel anything and I just want to explore my senses, <laughs> you can let me know and I would understand that. People would, would pay fully, for that. <laughs> I would fully understand that. I'd be like, no problem. We're going to walk around the corner. I'm going to put you in the van right now. Yeah. And it's scary. Recently, I my friend borrowed it to move and so he lined it with white like garbage bags and he didn't take all the stuff out so what was left was a chain 
and a mop and a bunch of cleaning supplies and a bucket. And I was like, well, now this is scarier. It was like a horror <laughs> man. Oh yeah. my goodness. That's horrifying. So that's what transports is. But I like transport. I was made to transport you, animals. It's a lot of work to do the kind of care that you do for your animals, but I think it does a lot for your community. It does a lot for me because I get to hang out with them. But I think that, I, I would hope that, one, the livestock ban doesn't go through. I hope not. Can we all? Oh, I, I didn't send the link, link because I didn't get my links together. I will share links from tonight. Try and get There's a thing you can do. You click through online and you tell your older person, I don't want that. Yeah. Got to got to start talking to your older person because you make a big change at that level all the time. B, it's such a pleasure to have you on stage here. Thank you so much. It's nice to have Cowboy Steve, too. Can we hear for the both of them? Our Thumbelina handler. Thumbelina, it's such a pleasure to have you. It happened. She, she pooped on me. Did you see it? It's wet. Where? It's wetter than the... Well, I wiped it on my notebook. Nobody noticed. No. Do y'all know about fecal then, transplants and how they're probably pretty healthy for you? She loves me. Yeah, we could talk about it. Maybe next time. Wait, should we pass her around before she goes back to bed? Yes. Does anybody want to hold this yes. check-in? Roz does. She's Hi. very sweet. <laughs> Is she a chicken or a hen? Here's the thing I'm going to say. This might not be true for poultry, but I say this for mammals, and it is true for mammals. When we as mammals, what unites us as mammals is like mamar to nurse. The Latin word for breast is mama. So like they think this is why when we contact one another, when we touch dogs or cats, ponies or goats, we produce all these feel-good endorphins. And the cool thing is they've done studies on emotional support animals. They produce it too. I don't know if this applies for them to Thumbelina because she's not a mammal. She's Chicken. Reptile or whatever the well birds they have cloacas. Right, someone told me that birds is not a category; it's reptiles now. Oh my God, they're not. They're I don't birds. know. <laughs> so it might not apply for her, but she's fine. <laughs> if she's fine, you're not doing a bad parasitic thing to her to hold her. So if anyone wants to hold no, her, no, she bad. obviously enjoys the love. I really like this idea. So when you, we didn't mention too with the goats, you do goat yoga. You got them when they were baby goats. And you do a... Has anybody heard of goat yoga? Yeah. yeah. It's, could um, be a hollow premise. Could be a really fun time. <laughs> moving your bod outside. Well, you get the yoga no matter what, but I think that what you bring to it, well, like what we just talked about, interacting with animals, yeah, like the endorphins that we release when we touch other living beings, especially ones that aren't like these complex inter interactions that we have with each other, can be really healing well, things. This is a trick, too. I make people touch each other a lot. Yeah. I hate it when they do that. I know we have more make, access to, to people that. though. Most people, not me or you in particular, but who's got that chicken? <laughs> You're doing great. Hi. Um, well, we're gonna we're gonna take a break. We got more people to talk to. Um, thank break. you so much, B. What's here? Chicken. I'm going to get a chicken.